All right, music fans, welcome back. Harmless Dave here talking real music in real time for a couple of real people out there just like you and just like me. Thank you for watching the channel. Um, Things continue on the downward spiral as far as viewership and uh, revenue. So again, if you'd like to join up on Patreon or via YouTube memberships, that would be much appreciated at this time. I'm out of bullets. You know, I've uh, begged and pleaded and now I'm praying. So uh, if you want to pray for the channel, pray for the channel. Um, Because again, I believe in prayer and I know there are better and bigger things uh, to pray for these days, but maybe number 99 out of 100 on your list of uh, things you need to pray for. um, You could just pray for this channel. Um, Here's Houston and uh, Relaunch 3. Here's some great music, again from Sweden. These are all songs that were done in the AOR world by fairly unknown people. And then Houston has come along and uh, found all of these hidden uh, gems and has put out this uh, great album. Came out last year. And uh, I really like when this band comes out with original material as well. But this is just... A tour de force of AOR greatness. Houston, relaunch three. Yeah, it's kind of like the old Boston logo, right? Uh, I hope they're not going to get in trouble for that. Anyway, um, so today is the second anniversary of the death of Meatloaf. And uh, Meatloaf died suddenly and uh, somewhat mysteriously. Uh, He was ill. Um, It was later said that uh, he had contracted the thing, as I used to like to say on this channel, and I still do from time to time, because it used to keep the censorship away and the algorithm at bay. See how I did that? Um, But it doesn't anymore, quite frankly. I mean, I can use all the code language uh, I can think of on the fly, and uh, it won't really matter all that much. Well, here's the thing about Meatloaf. He was scared to death of getting this illness. He was in the demographic. He was 74 years old. He probably had one or maybe two or possibly even three comorbidities. And if you remember back when this was happening, they were saying people with more comorbidities are at a much higher risk. People over 70 years old, a higher risk. And so that's why you needed to go to CVS multiple times. This was 2022 when this happened. So it was about a year after they released the super safe and effective products that they are still advertising on television, which um, is is just a little bit disconcerting at this stage of how they just continue moving forward and everybody else has got questions. The people who don't have questions here, here's what I want to say to you guys. Do a little, just do a little bit of research. Do a little, jump over the fence. Look over at the dark side for a moment and think to yourself, maybe some of these people don't have my best interests at heart because this is what I get all the time. Like, why would they do that? They're just trying to help. You know, there was no other way to deal with this. Really? There was no other way. People who are trying to tell you about other ways to deal with this were being blocked, censored, banned, um, doxxed, um, made fun of on late night television. Jimmy Kimmel, man. Um, I, I just don't get these. I know because they're funding source, right? If they're being brought to you by the company that made the safe and effective product, of course, they're going to shill for the company that made this safe and effective product. So what happened to Meatloaf? Well, he got sick and he died. Now, the speculation, though, after that was, did he die from the thing? Or did he die from what Jimmy Kimmel was telling people that they had to do? Or, you know, they would be uh, shamed and at some level financially destroyed I mean, what about the nurse, right? Let's just say there's a nurse who is a single mom and she has no other choice but to do this or she's going to lose her job. That's blackmail. Uh, People shouldn't have to choose between 
those two things. We hear a lot about choice, right? We hear, oh, a woman has a right to choose. Okay. All right. I get your argument. I'm not in that camp that believes in many circumstances that that should be a problem, but I'm also pro-life. I believe in the sanctity of human life, and I do show grace to others who have a different point of view on that, but that's a very urgent thing, and that's why it's so polarizing. With this, it was like, you're going to give me this stuff? Okay, um, first question. So what's, what's in this stuff? Can you tell me what's in it? No, it's the label here is blank, which it was. All right. I don't know if it's changed, but it used to be blank. But don't worry. I remember this press conference they had in New York where um, this health official was standing next to Governor Cuomo at the time saying, I don't care what's in it. I'm just going to do it because we have to do it. I'm just trusting it. All right. Great. Don't they recall car seats if like one of them fails because maybe a baby flew out of the car or it failed and it broke or something and the baby was injured? They recall car seats, right? They recall food, right? There's, you know, a couple of frozen dinners that have been in the freezer section a little bit too long at your local supermarket. They look at the expiration date and they get rid of those. But then there are others, right? that maybe at the plant something went wrong and some salmonella or whatever got in there. And so what do they do? They, they send out a massive recall and people freak out. Water main breaks in your community. Well, you got to boil your water for the next couple of days just to be on the safe side. But this, what, what's up with this? For some reason, we don't err on the side of caution here. So I don't know exactly if it was what Meatloaf did or what Meatloaf didn't do that ended his life. And some would say, well, you know, the guy was periodically very overweight. Uh, he had gotten his weight under control uh, more so than in the early days of his career. Uh, he had collapsed on stage a number of times um, not too long ago. Uh, there were stories about meatloaf collapsing. Um, as far as being a bigger than life character, uh, I mean, I'm a huge fan. I love meatloaf. I love what his music uh, meant to a couple of different generations. I mean, bad out of hell one, bad out of hell two. And a guy, too, that over time kind of changed his political views. And I thought, wow. That's interesting. He's not just falling in lockstep with everybody else. At one point, Meat Love said this. He said, I would rather die than be controlled. And for some people, that isn't heroic. That's stupidity, right? For a, a group of people out there would say, you're an idiot. You'd still be here if you had just let us control you. What else are they going to control us with? They're telling us what to eat. They're telling us what to drive in certain circumstances, especially with this particular issue. They're telling you what you need to wear on your face, right? So, and they're telling you how far apart you should stand from other people. And it's just going to keep going. We know better. Trust the experts. That's all they ever say is the experts, the experts. Well, Meatloaf was having none of it. And the fear that the media had created leading up to his death, I believe was the main factor, fear. You know, it, fear is an evil construct. And the more fear that is out there, you know, fear displaces love, fear displaces hope, fear displaces courage, but you find courage facing the fear, you know, do the thing you fear and the death of fear is certain. That's an old proverb from somebody. I don't know who it was, but in any event, um, it's a powerful force. And um, everybody was so afraid. Howard Stern wasn't coming out of his house, remember? Just wasn't coming out. Nope. And guess what happened to Howard Stern recently? He got the thing he feared. All right. This thing I greatly feared has come upon me. I believe that's in the book of Job somewhere. So, 
in any event, people, um, we really don't know what happened to Meatloaf. Um, his family knows specifically what happened to him. Um, I'm sure the media, they constructed a narrative about this, and most people are just going to believe the narrative. Um, Meatloaf died because he didn't do what we told him to do. And some people will say, well, good riddance. You know, Jimmy Kimmel, tough luck, Wheezy. Tough luck. These are cruel people. These are cruel and unusual people. All right. And I don't know where it ends. It ends when enough people say, you know what? I think there's some reasonable doubt here. Like in a court of law, when you present the information, if there's reasonable doubt, um, you're not found guilty because it needs to be a slam dunk case. Well, what happened in 2020 and 2021, there is a ton of reasonable doubt. That's why parents aren't, you know, taking their kids to CVS or to the pediatrician as much as they used to. They have questions about what is actually in this stuff. And, and that's legitimate. You should have questions. You, As a good person, as a good parent, you should be able to question this and say, eh, I don't know. I think we're going to pass. I think the risks outweigh the benefits. That's a very rudimentary way to do this. So, again, um, it's sad that Meatloaf is gone. He would have been 76, I think, today, which uh, isn't over the hill. But uh, in today's world, 76 is like 106. Um, and hopefully he's in a better place, right? Hopefully, you know, his album title, Bat Out of Hell, means that he was the bat that got out of hell. Let's just hope, right? I think he understood, uh, and I think he knew who God was. So I don't know. It's between meatloaf and God. It's not between me to figure that out. But in any event, um, I'll give another plug here for the band Houston. And when I think of this band, I always say, Houston, we don't have a problem. Uh, Relaunch 3, it's great. You can check out their other work. Um, they have a number of albums out there. I think I have another one of their albums from two years ago that made my top 20. This made my top 20 because they're a really good band. Um, it's a combination of pop and AOR, and they do just a, a great job. Very original sounding. And one more time, folks, for this channel, as we approach rock bottom when it comes to revenue, if you'd like to support, we picked up a couple of more supporters. Um, and a lot of the supporters, by the way, that are coming on board over on Patreon, like this type of content where I swerve wildly out of my lane. Dude, just talk about meatloaf, man. Yeah, two out of three ain't bad. I, what do you want me to say? Great artist. That's what I know about meatloaf. Um, legend. Not in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, by the way. <laughs> and I'll end the video on that note.